Hey, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for returning back to one of my videos, and hopefully this video will be a huge help for any of you playing Big Ambitions right now. But I just wanted to put together a little tips and tricks video of stuff that I have learned in the time that I've been playing this game. Um, I mean, I do have, I wouldn't consider myself an expert, but I am learning as I go, and I try to share as much of this information as possible when I learn it. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and start it out, and some of the basics is food you want to make sure that you stay on top of food because when you come up here you will see under happiness that as long as you maintain all of your happiness above zero percent then you don't have to worry about any of these negative boosts because these negatives are like risk of entering periods of sadness reduced employee happiness and all this good stuff so you do not want to have these problems uh, negative boosts are also caused by like sleeping in a car not having an apartment or even going to the hospital so going to the hospital is caused by you running out of energy. The energy is a major, major, major problem because if you run out of energy, I think you have a probably about, I think it's roughly 60 steps or so before you pass out and then you're going to get sent to the hospital. So just make sure you don't do any of that stuff. As long, and that also makes or helps out with your revenue. So all of your happiness stats can be found right here, which are... Uh, just small little boosters. Um, at the beginning, you're not necessarily going to see a lot of this stuff, um, such as like watch TV, play video games, positive revenue, or any of this. Uh, gambling at the casino is another one, which we'll cover that later on in the video. So stick around for that. But that's uh, some of the big ones. So one of the other things that you got to worry about is hunger. So hunger, when it's at 0%, you have an increased energy consumption of 200%. And that is huge because that means that you have less time during your day in order to actually do the things you want to do. So last but not least, we have energy. So when energy reaches zero, you have a following impact, which is walking slower risk of passing out from exhaustion and faster decrease of your hunger status. So basically all of them work hand in hand in hand. Now, the better the bed that you have, such as like this king size bed that I have here, it requires less time to sleep. So if you see here, I'm currently at around 48% ish. If I only sleep for two hours, then it goes up by a drastic amount. So it means you don't have to sleep as long. Uh, the speakers and stuff that I have going on around the house, that's just for fun. So, And of course, this is like one of the bigger houses and wonderful, but it's okay. Uh, it's not necessarily a big, big problem. Now, the other thing I'm going to talk about is your HR managers. So HR managers, when you get them up to 100%, and I can show you here. So like this is a 100% HR manager. So Victoria Sanders, right? If you come here to HR managers, you'll see Victoria Sanders, she can handle up to 25 employees. Now they can only boost the training of employees to their maximum setting. So if they're 100%, they can boost to 100%. If they're 90%, they can boost to 90%, so on and so forth. But the reason why these are important is because you can then handle all of these people, right? So if someone calls out sick or any of that kind of stuff, they can uh, basically fill in, fill in people for them. So that way you don't lose out on money at the expense of 10% extra. So that's going to go into my next topic that I was going to talk about, which is salaries. So if you see here, I've got a bunch of people that are like $15 salaries and all that wonderful stuff. Now, what I personally like to do is I will come in here and look for people with lower settings, such as like, let's say this guy right here. So, or female, sorry, Madeline Bailey, 25% on cleaning, right? She wants to be part-time and only $15 an hour. Now that $15 an hour does not change. So in the exchange for that, you can train them. It's at 10% maximum per day if you do individual training. Now, it does cost money to do the training. But the key here is, is that $15 an hour stays no matter what. They can be at 100% cleaning and be 100% efficient, but that $15 will stay no matter what. So when you get employees, like let's say this guy right here, this or another Madeline, if you get her, right? See, $200 an hour, right? And she is a full-time employee. So that's $200 an hour times 40. That's, what, $8,000 a week, right? That you're basically having to pay this woman just to work as a lawyer. 
Now, if I come down here, you can see, look at $77 an hour. And she is also full time. So that will stay no matter what. Like here's another one, $83 an hour, full time employee. So you're literally cutting your, your wages in half just by finding those lower quality people. Not to mention, they have less wants and demands. So if you compare like this one here to something like her, see, she requires a minimum of another item in order to make her happy. But as long as they're at 100% satisfaction, that directly goes into, where is it? So that directly goes into here, which is your satisfaction levels. Now the customer service satisfaction is not only by having highly trained customers or service employees, but also their satisfaction level. So until their satisfaction level is at 100%, you will almost never see this at 100%. Uh, some of the other things that I've noticed is while we're on the topic of lawyers is pricing. So pricing right here, you can always match. You just look at your uh, inventory and pricing here. So like currently I have mine at $700 and people are happy with it. So you got to find whatever price works for you. Okay. So it depends on their location, depends on the market traffic, which market traffic can all be seen right here, but it all depends on that kind of stuff that determines your price. Same with all of this down here. So interior cleanliness, all that works, it factors into your money. All right. So on the next level, we have marketing. So marketing here can be done by two locations, city ads and McCain's are e-marketing. Once you physically go into those stores, you can then actually call them instead of having to go to the store. It makes it really, really, really nice. Now McCain's e-marketing will do uh, online internet campaigns. So like, as you see, I have all three active on this lawyer business and then city ads will do billboards. Keep in mind that when you do this, they will have different expenses. So like the large billboard is $6,000, which you will need for your bigger businesses. You do not need them for small businesses. So if you're starting out with like something, let me just see here. So deep pocket lemons, I know is one of my smaller stores. So the only marketing I have is one small billboard and it puts it at hundred percent. If you go with McKinsey marketing and you do the three small campaigns, this will only be 77% if you do all three, whereas this one small billboard maxes out the smaller one. So it can be advantageous to use the bigger ones. All right, now with that being said, if you also look, this is the kind of stuff you gotta look at. So as you can see here, this business is actually being inefficient because I am only using 10 out of the 15 customer capacity. So you'll see it recognized in yellow. This yellow here just shows you that it's inefficient. Now, this is my lower level clothing store. As I said, it's a small store. Now, if you come over here to, let me say here, you can see here, everything is green. You want to make sure that you're being as efficient as possible. You may not afford it initially, but when you can do it, I highly, highly recommend it. So the bigger stores, like I said, are gonna need more stuff. So like one checkout counter, for example, is for 30 customers. If you have something like, let's say the 75 one, which you can see, I think it's right here. Nope. Let me see. Yeah. So example, this one, so 75 customer capacity, that would mean that you would need a minimum of two of the checkout counters for this. I would probably use three just because that would give you a maximum capacity of 90. You don't need it though. A cash register can handle 15 or 20. I don't remember, but it's one of those two. So I would strongly recommend probably using three check counters for something like this. I do not have any of those stores available, so I can't show you what that looks like at the moment, but that's just one of the things. Now, the other things to look at is when you're doing your logistics managers. So I have Louise Thompson here. She is a 100% Louis, uh, logistics manager. She handles my warehouse. I have two truck, a freight truck delivery drivers. Now in order to use a delivery driver with a freight truck, you have to have a minimum of 70% of 
on the delivery driver in order to drive a freight truck. Now, where this makes a difference is that if I put one of these guys in a van, it cuts their delivery destinations in half. It also depends on your logistics manager. So a logistics manager just by themselves can handle up to eight, P or eight destinations with a van. But if they have the freight truck, they can deliver up to 16 locations. So it's a huge, huge difference. Now, keep in mind that all of my delivery drivers and my logistics manager is at 100%. So this is the maximum you can get. This is also in a large warehouse. It's the biggest warehouse you can get. So I have my warehouse right here. So this is the 1300 square meter one. So now the other thing I have been seeing is that some people have complained about trying to assign employees. It's actually really, really simple. You just come in here and let's say I want to hire Lois and put her down on the schedule. You'll have your open hours here, which you can change by just adjusting this slider. And you just drag and drop them onto the schedule. But you want to make sure that you're keeping in mind their needs. So like this woman, she only wants part time. Part time can work a maximum of 30 hours. If you're going full time, full time, they only want to work a maximum of 50 hours. If you go above that, then they will be unhappy, which interacts with their satisfaction level. So their satisfaction level here will decrease. Once they get down to below 30%, they're going to send you a little text message, which I'll show you right now. So once they get below their 30%, you're going to send a text message. Once they get down, if you do not meet their satisfaction needs at that point, once it gets down to 15%, they will quit their job. So you will lose that employee. And it would really suck if you leveled them up all the way to 100% and didn't meet their satisfaction levels. So those are the kinds of things. Now, the other thing is when you come into a store, let me just drive over to a store real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is another way to maximize your time. If I can get out of here, I'm doing some Austin powers right now. Let's say, cause I'm just going to come over here to Lux concept so I can show you an example. Lux Concept is the really, really expensive uh, like for a furniture store. But now once you go to a store, it doesn't matter what store. Oh, crap. Of course, I put myself next to a sign. But once you go to any store, you come into the store and you want to sit down with one of these store managers. Once they do that, you can decline that. Now, if you look at your phone, you will have Lux Concept available. So you can come in here and call. Um, you, well, you can't be in the store to call, but you come in here to call. And then once you call them, you can select whatever address you want, select a delivery time, and then you can add whatever items you want. Now, it is a minimum of $2,000 in order to have them deliver to your place. At the beginning of the game, it's going to be a little expensive to do this, but later on, it's really, really, really nice because they can deliver up to 18 items per delivery. The cost is $250 for the delivery fee, but you have to have a minimum of $2,000. All right. Some of the other things is if you go to purchasing agents, purchasing agents, the more a, the better trained they are, the cheaper it is. So, for example, I have all of my delivery agents, right? So my delivery agents uh, or logistics, logistics people, sorry. So if I come here, right, I have, let's see, 100, 100, 100, 100, and 100. But if I have this one at 97%, now this last one is at 58%. But to give you an idea, so... When you go into actually purchase something, these prices will be drastically lower if you do it with a maxed out purchasing agent. So to give you an idea, let me just go ahead and call them, set this up with Dusty. Now, when you do this, for example, these paper bags right here, look, six cents each. So if I go to the actual, like, uh, if I go to 
the New York City Distribution Inc Incorporated, which is what the, the quest will start you out with, it's $100 to buy a thousand paper bags. Whereas here, with my maxed out agent, it's six cents each, so I can buy a thousand for $57. So it drastic, that basically cuts your costs in half and it's gonna increase your profits. The same goes for anything else here though. So as you can see here, it's 444 a piece, right? Now, if I go to the actual like distribution incorporated, so let's say to buy a hundred of these, it says $443 for this is classic cheap mail clothing, right? Actually, just to show you, I'm gonna go over there. Just give me one moment, I'll drive over and show you what I'm talking about. And I apologize too, because I'm gonna have a lot of notifications. I'm trying to uh, work up another business there that you see highlighted called Citrus Clothing, so. And I do like driving the truck instead of the van because the truck can hold up to 20, uh, 20 goods versus the, uh, and it also has a max speed of 70. Whereas the van is a max speed of uh, 50 with a max capacity of 20. All right, so here's the drive-in, which I'm going to have you go through on the main quest line. All right. Now, just to show you, all your clothes or all your food is over here on this aisle. You have your uh, gifts, uh, gifts, uh, what do you call it? Gift shop items right here. And if you come around here, all the clothes are right here. All right, so so this is 50 pieces. Let's say classic cheap male clothing, $376. Now, if I come in here, so classic cheap male clothing. If I cancel this, put it in an order for 50, $221. So that's what, a 40% discount off of what you would pay here? So it is way better profit-wise once you get your logistics managers to get them max level so that way you can maximize every bit of money that you could possibly make because then it turns companies into this where i'm making thirty five thousand dollars a profit every day and i have only changed the prices by seven dollars on each of my items so seven dollars across each one of these makes me a thirty thousand dollar profit but uh so the other things to pay attention to is uh, as the quest line goes about, you're going to have these market uh, market demands. So in my in my area right now, French fries, donuts, cheap gifts, all this stuff is really, really, uh, they really, really want it. But you're also going to have alerts. So these alerts are extremely important because this is going to just justify whether or not you should buy certain products. You can also hike up prices based on these products. So if like, for example, right now, cheap gifts, a classic expensive female clothes and modern cheap male clothing, I can hike up the prices on those right now because they have reduced shortage. So that means their demand is way, way up. But economy view, the other thing you could look at is investments. Like for example, here, um, I put in, I think like 1.1 million or so, or 1.1 billion or something like that. And this is gonna keep going up. Now you can do investments through two companies. So if you come here, let's say, I'm gonna turn all this stuff off so it's easier to see, but you have two banks. Now, Jensen Capital is gonna give you the lower, like kind of uh, risk type stuff. And if you really wanna risk it all, you can go with Van Tander Bank, which is up here in the Midtown District, or sorry, uh, Hell's Kitchen District. But they are a lot more risky. So if you come in here, to the banks like i said you got to go to the bank first if you call them uh well crap it's the weekend so they're not going to be open sorry but there, there's going to be like like i said jensen is a lot low risk i usually invest mine with jensen using the first option because it's you have no risk of losing any money it's zero percent to five percent the next level for them is negative one percent to three percent so you could lose one percent or you could gain three percent the last one, you have negative 5% all the way up to 15%. Uh, I have not done anything long-term yet, so I can't say whether or not that's a good value or not. But Van Tander, on the other hand, you have a capability of going 
excuse me, going all the way up to 30%. Like I said, I have not tested any of those yet, so I will not say that it's worth it or not to actually do said, uh, such a thing. But so some of the other things, though, is like you just got to make sure that you're looking out for what you have. Now, I already showed you how you can do like um, deliveries and all that good stuff. But what you can do is you can also go to the Metro wholesale stores or New York City distro once you have them set up and you can actually do deliveries. So if you go start contract here and I say I want to do Spencer's gifts. OK, it's going to cost a thousand dollars to do this. So it's a lot cheaper once you have your delivery drivers. But at the beginning of the game, this could be an option for you. They will deliver a maximum of 20 boxes to whatever location. So if I click accept, go in here to Bismo, and then I can come in here and set a specific delivery day that I want everything. And then I can directly order from them to my location. And then I can do this for a maximum of 100 bo or 20 boxes. So let's say I want to do paper boxes. Now, keep in mind that this will be a little bit more expensive depending on where you buy it from. See, so that's $985 for 20 or for eight boxes of paper bags. Now I can come in here and do more paper bags here. So 16 boxes. And then all the way up to 20 boxes. In total, that would cost me $3,400. Now, keep in mind that I said that your delivery driver can handle these from your warehouse. But for an early game option, this is kind of a nice little way of basically setting up deliveries to your locations without you having to hand deliver everything. So, but I strongly suggest when you get the opportunity, uh, this truck is $44,000. I strongly suggest it when you get the opportunity. Because this truck, I think, is a freaking game changer. The van you'll have to buy through uh, through your actual like quest line and all that. But now, with that being said, and all those other tips mentioned before, there are some businesses though that I think I, uh, are a little like undervalued, I guess. So, like for example, my burger joint here, it says. Uh, let me see. So Blarney's Burgers. So it says that I only need one cash register because you can see right here. So I can I do 20 people per cash register and my big current capacity is only 15. But I get so much business in this location that I have to have these two or the line gets so long it goes out the door and I can't fully maximize uh, my money. So just to show you, I mean, I can stand here for a matter of like maybe two minutes and you'll see the line just gets huge. But without that second register, you actually start losing out because the customers can't find a place to go and you lose out on customer service. The other key, too, is if with fast food restaurants, you want to have a place to sit. Same with like coffee, uh, coffee bars and any of that other stuff. Retail, you want to look at... Um, like setting your register a pretty good far ba far away back so that way you can have a longer line from the door. Now I think the pathing is still a little weird on these people, but it's just yeah, it's okay. But with that being said though, now I want to give you the biggest tip possible and that is revolving around the casino. The casino is available once you complete certain uh, to a certain level on your quest line. It is $5,000 to get a ticket in order to go on the boat, but it is the single handedly biggest way to make money. If you want to do it that way. Now, I know every player likes to do a different style and all that stuff. So some people may not like doing safe scamming, but for the moment, you can exploit it to make a ton of money. Um, but it's only if you want to do it, but I will show you guys that here momentarily. So that way, if you want to take, you can. And so up next on our uh, wonderful tips and tricks is we have this wonderful place right here, the casino. So using this wonderful contraption here, you can uh, make quite a bit of money at a cost of just a little bit of money. I strongly suggest, though, for <clears throat> anybody starting out in the game is that you uh, would come here with at least like fifteen or twenty thousand dollars just to start out with. 
But uh, it's a great way to make a bunch of money if you want to do it. It's up to you totally how you play. I'm not right. Like, I don't necessarily always recommend this just because, I mean, technically it is exploiting. But I'll show you guys just in a moment once this uh, wonderful cutscene is over. All right, so once you're on the boat, uh, I would strongly recommend you getting some food and water or food and coffee so that way you can get your food and stuff back up. So it's going to be a small expense, but totally worth it. Just that way you have all your stuff filled. But like I said, is I would strongly recommend you coming in here with at least 20, uh, at least going to the casino with 20,000 to start this out because you got to pay 5,000 just for the casino to get on the boat. But after you're here, the easiest one of the easiest ways to double your money is if you just go here to the blackjack table. But you want to save first. Save your game and then once you come in here, you can just a maximum bet of up to nine million nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars, which I think they did that just to prevent people from uh, like prevent people from doing this stuff, kinda, or at least maxing out. But for now, since I only have two point two million at the time, I'm just going to bet that, and then uh, you just play your blackjack. All right, so I did not win. So you just come here, go to the main menu. Come back in. And then resume your betting because you never lost your money, technically. One of the faster ways to do this, too, is if you control C to copy that and then bet. So that way you can just copy and paste. You won't win every time. Um, I found that it's usually like it's usually like probably about a 30% chance that you win so far since I've been playing. Yeah, we'll go with 19. And of course they get 21. Now, if you do go into a bunch of like a bunch of streaks or if you push, I would also recommend possibly like just resuming your save so that way you don't waste time. Uh, the, the max I found that I can normally get in one night is about two point is probably about 400 million uh as long as you don't waste your time but yeah i'm apparently not getting lucky right now but this is a the basic way to do it so that way you can maximize the amount of money that you get really really quickly with minimal um uh, what do you call it minimal risk come on give me a face card there we go and there we go. So now you can see I doubled my money. So you just hit save. So that way you keep that money and then you can bet your new amount until basically you get to that 999 million. And then from there, you can keep doing the 999 million from there. So I hope this helps. If you did uh, like the video or any of that kind of stuff, or if any of these tips did help you, please just leave me a comment down below. So that way you, we can share in our huge money-making profits together. But with that being said, if you like the video, please just like and subscribe. So that way you can see more future content like this and many, many more like it. I do live stream this game uh, occasionally. So if you want to try to catch that, uh, just look out for it. I also have my Discord links down below. So thank you guys so much. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everyone. So one more hot tip that I forgot to mention is if you want to mass select something such as like if you want to hire like all these people right here that are unassigned you can do these little clicks over here and you can change whatever you want over here so just a small little extra tip that i forgot to throw in there so hope this helps like and subscribe love you bye one more thing i just want to give a quick thank you to all of the members that have joined the channel and joined the lemon army for everything that you guys do because you help support the channel in order to make more videos like this possible. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you guys more in the future. Thank you again, everyone.